Hello everybody, thanks for joining in. Uh, for those of you who've just tuned in and don't know what's happening, uh, we've basically set aside a time to pray uh, for our nations, everybody for their own nation and collectively for the whole world. As things are happening in the world as you're aware and we want to uh, basically conquer what the devil has set out to achieve and we want to um, claim the land it belongs to us not the devil the children of God now before we pray um, I just wanted to speak a little bit because uh, looking at the numbers and to be honest looking at the numbers of people who viewed our few uh, videos uh, that were published and they were all calling for prayer uh, and our video of announcement of this session and the, the, the following sessions the number of views compared to the number of people who've just turned up uh, on this live session it, it, it's just it's just uh, to be all, to be <laughs> to be frank with you it's marvelous isn't it it's astonishing to see only a handful of people turning up only a handful of people being serious about serious things happening in the world the world is almost upside down and we don't realize that these people i appreciate you joining us um, no offense to anybody of course we appreciate you coming here but we're not this message is going to be recorded and replayed uh, for people to see again i know lots of people are busy with their lives and lots of people are at work or other places at this time they can't join us that's that's completely understandable but what we don't understand is we've had uh, up until this time at this moment as we speak on the video of my dream which was a startling warning um, to the whole world really and I personally believe it's prophetic and I, I believe that as a church as the body of Christ we need to collectively pray uh, against those things at least uh, pray that we might be saved and protected physically we've had about 25,000 views on that and on the video of uh, my wife's dream uh, where she's pleading uh, for the Americans in particular to pray for America as a nation uh, we've had uh, up until this time but had about two, 212,000 views and uh, I made another video about COP26 the climate change and all that that uh, was held in uh, Scotland in Glasgow recently and all world leaders were there uh, laying out all these rules behind the scene while everybody is busy with COVID-19 um, and, and again uh, a call for people to to pray against that and uh, the number of people even viewing that was pathetic and uh, it's just astonishing and it's just really annoying me personally it makes me angry uh, to be honest that uh, society has gone so far away from morality we've been so much brainwashed by the media so much that we can't even see right from wrong we can't see um, what is good and what is evil we don't even distinguish the difference we I don't mean as the body of Christ we I mean as, as, as the whole world collectively as, as a generation especially the youth the young generation is completely lost they lost the plot and um, you know I'm I'm a college lecturer and I see these um, young people come into the college and the way they talk the way they act and behave the, the way they get dressed it's just beyond imagination it's just it's unbelievable that they have lost it completely they don't know they have no sense of morality 
the girl comes into college with a bikini and a leather jacket on. And the college doesn't say anything about it. It's... What, what, what do I call that? Corinthians, you know when you read about Corinthians, compared to where we are now, Corinthians were probably heaven. The boys, they have no respect for the elderly, they have no respect for the teachers, they have no respect for the college, they have no respect for their own friends. They, the guy comes into the college, into the classroom and puts his foot on the desk. The other guy comes in with a cap on and when you ask him to take his cap off, it's just, why? They don't understand why. You have to actually explain to them why. Do you, do you get the gist? Now, we're going away from the main, we're not trying to di digress to other subjects, but it just makes me angry when somebody uh, goes live on Facebook, social media, any social media, Instagram, whatever, and starts twerking, all of a sudden you have millions of views. I work hard to put an engineering video out there and only get a handful of people watching it. We work hard to put sermons out there. I've gathered scriptures after scriptures, cross-reference scriptures, made sure nothing is wrong, made sure there's no, nothing polit politically wrong even. Uh, to begin with, I was doing that. Now, I'm not doing that. I've crossed over the red, red lines and, and I'm going uh, beyond uh, the limitations that they put on us. I don't have any limitations. God made us free to speak freely, to speak our minds. Uh, and, and the facts are, my, the number of views that we get after all that hard work is just pathetic compared to the number of viewers a twerker gets. And people enjoy it. People love watching it and sharing it. We are sending you a message that the world is at a critical stage. The world is turning upside down. Uh, we have to be aware, at least as the body of Christ, as, at least as Christians, we have to be aware of that and we have to do something about it. We can't just sit there and be complacent and think, well, whatever it may be, it can't, we can't do that. We have to do something about this. Um, we are doing this for you, for the world, for us as well, for everybody to be safe and live a free life. How much of our freedoms have been already taken away from under our noses and we don't even know it. Only the last few videos that we've published, we've got thousands and thousands of comments out of thousands of comments, we've only had uh, maybe hundreds of people who said that they would pray. And out of those hundreds of people who said they would pray, they watched uh, quite a few of them, only a couple of, couple of thousands of them have watched our prayer announcement, which announces these dates and times. And out of those, only these people have turned up to join and pray. Like I said, I understand it's a busy time of the year and I understand uh, people can't make it uh, at this time maybe, but the idea is all those thousands or tens of thousands, in case of her video, hundreds of thousands of viewers couldn't be bothered to even share that and at least give us some encouraging something. We've got lots of encouraging uh, comments not talking about those, but we've had also attacks. We've been attacked, she's been attacked, I've been attacked personally for putting out those videos. Is that even right? And they, they are the ones who consider themselves godly as well. 
unbelievable. Um, really, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not happy. It's really disturbing that the number of people who at least have watched this video, they know and some of them believe and they even agree and they even say they come and pray and only a handful turn up seriously to pray, to join. This is a serious battle, this is a spiritual battle. You can't just sit there and think that Jesus with all his angels is going to come and rescue us and save us and the devil is going to lose because Jesus crushed his head thousands of years ago. Yes, he did. But we, as the body of Christ, have a part to play. Jesus gave us a commission, a command. Go to the world, preach the gospel, baptize them, and heal the sick, cast demons out. So all these things we have to be supposed to do. We can't just sit there and say angels will do that and the Holy Spirit will do this and, and I'm just here. Because I am British. Because I am American. No. It, it's, it's, not, it's not that way. It doesn't work that way. We are saved by grace, our spirit is saved. Our physical body, we are still in this world. Jesus says, you are in this world, but you are not of this world. We are not of this world. So we have to at least act differently. We can't be the same as the rest, follow the same standards, same principles. We have our own principles that never changes. Not by time, not by fashion. We have God's standard. We have Jesus as our own role model. Not some celebrity. Not some star from a Hollywood movie. They should look up to us, not the other way around. Anyway, <clears throat> I think I said too much for this uh, session that was supposed to be just for prayer. Um, it's all because it just irks me, it annoys me so much, it boils my blood so much that uh, when I see um, corrupt and immoral images, videos go viral in a matter of seconds even, but a video that is godly, is promoting morality, it goes nowhere. And not only that, we get even banned from social media. I put posts on uh, Facebook, social media, it doesn't go anywhere. But we can't say these things because it's crossing red lines. You can't talk about God, you can't talk about morality. We have different Facebook pages, we have <clears throat> our own we have our own ministry page, uh, we have my I have my own engineering page and uh, our own personal pages. We have a psoriasis uh, page. We actually give out the cure to, to, to to cure people with psoriasis condition and it just goes nowhere and not only that like I said they ban us they say this is illegal this is you know you can't say cure you can't cure people nobody can cure people 
There is no remedy for this and there is no cure. We talk about God, say no, this is not good enough. You have to just talk about immorality, sex, adultery, those things that go viral. We'll help you. We put your video at the end of other people's videos. We promote your videos. Talk about money. We'll spread it fast. You don't even need to put your money in it to advertise it. We advertise it for you. Can you see how much we've gone away from morality, how much corrupt this world has become? That's what annoys me. And yet, we have Christians who go to church on a Sunday, they put the mask of Christianity on themselves, they put the badge, badge on, Christianity is a lifestyle. If you are a Christian and you're listening to this, and you are a Christian, Sunday Christian, I'm sorry, but you, you need to repent. You haven't got the Spirit of God yet. The, the Spirit of God will not keep somebody having two, two personalities. This is my Christian life and this is my social life. You can't have that. There's one life, one lifestyle. Everybody who knows me at my workplace, all the workplaces I've worked, um, all the um, accounts I've had, social media accounts, whether it is engineering or my own personal, it's all the same. Everything is mirroring everything else. So it is showing, it's all showing, reflecting my personality. Whether I'm an engineering lecturer or a minister of God, or I'm just myself on my own personal page, I am me. I don't change my personality. I don't go and speak different languages there and a different language here. I don't put different posts there that is just relevant for people to entertain themselves yeah. with somebody twerking her button and not put that and put some picture of crucifix of God on my ministry channel. I don't do that. This is all the same. We, we live the same. We've had people, I've seen people go to work and when you talk about God, they just don't want to hear it. But on a Sunday, they go to church. Is that Christianity? I, I don't believe that. That is not Christianity. Christianity is a lifestyle. 24-7, there is no rest. There is no rest. There is no holiday. You can't take a holiday from God. There is no such thing. God is always there, wherever you go. I rest my case here. Uh, that is enough of my rant. And now, um, Stacy. Yeah, I just want to say quickly, because um, we're going to go into prayer right now. It's really important as you're praying that you repent first. Now, I was never taught this in churches when I grew up. I wasn't taught this by um, any of the different places that I was in that were Christian-based. My husband actually introduced this to me, and the light went on because this is all throughout Scripture. Nehemiah, when he um, heard the news about Jerusalem, the first thing he did was repented for the nation. He says, I repent for my father's house and everything my father's household has done and everything I've done. Daniel also said, forgive me of my sins when he was praying for the things that were going on there. And prophet over prophet over prophet prays for their own forgiveness first they repent for themselves, for the nation, and then presents their requests and their supplications before God. So this is very important that we come to the throne of God with a clean heart. And also that we um, cover ourselves and our families with the blood of Jesus. Because when we do these prayers, it shakes up the heavens. And Satan doesn't like to be shook up. And it does things. It changes things. Every single prayer changes something. Because the Word of God says that... Um, Every word from my mouth 
does not return to me void. And we, we are praying in the Spirit of God, in alignment with His Word, our words will not come back void. You might not see what's happening, but they won't come back void. So we are going to, right now, pray in that kind of order, repent for our sins, um, cover ourselves and our families with the blood of Jesus, and please do a comment with your prayers and chat. We can't actually watch the comments and pray at the same time, so we'll get to those afterwards, hopefully. And I pray that you'll be blessed with this session. Please do share it with your families, with your church groups, um, as many people as can pray. We will see our prayers change the world. Please also keep an eye on this page as we might change the time and date of our prayers. Um, the, the sessions might change because uh, people might, again, with your comments, we go along as we just play by the ear, really. We, we, we just have to listen to what people uh, say, the response we get, the number of responses we get, and where they are and what time is suitable for them. So we're just basically gauging it as at the moment as we go along. So things will change and the frequency of it, it might increase, it might decrease. Because if we turn up here and keep uh, wasting our electricity and wasting our energy talking to the air, then uh, we might as well just pray between ourselves. We don't need to uh, light up a room to, to record anything and just speak uh, to God in the private of our own rooms. But the idea is to get together and pray all together in one accord, as they did in the scripture, to pray together in one accord and agree. If two of you get together in my name and agree on, one th on anything, I also agree. I will be in the midst of you and I will agree. Uh, and I personally, we've pers in, in our personal life, we've seen things change. Uh, we've prayed for almost impossible things and they have changed. Now, I don't want to go into examples and testimonies of those things. Uh, I will do if you're interested in other sessions, other videos. But at the moment, we want to keep it shorter now. Uh, I've had a rant as well. So we want to just go straight to the prayer. So if you will, please uh, follow uh, the prayer pattern. You can say your own words. But um, the way we want to go to the battle, this is a battle. You have to consider this, this is as, as a battle. You don't just go to fight with, with nothing in your hand. You don't go to war with no weapon. You have to have your own weapons. And our weapon is the word of God, which is sharper than any double-edged sword. So we have that, and we have the full armor of God you know, that we have to put on. All right. Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, people who are joining and watching these um, broadcasts and joining us in prayer. Thank you that um, you've given us the, the ability to do this, um, enabling us to do this. And Thank you for giving us the, the words of wisdom that come from you and, and the dreams and the visions you've given us and the warnings you've given us. Thank you that you warned us and you've enabled us to pray, have given us the power to pray to change things. We're asking you that you may forgive our sins, forgive my personal sins since I've been born and the sins of my father and my forefathers. Forgive us, wash us with the blood of Jesus Christ. Wash my whole house and my whole household. Everyone and everything in this house, wash them all. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanse us and set us apart to be holy. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, God. 
and sanctify us. Accept us in the Holy of Holies. Let us enter in the Holy of Holies and put forward our prayers and petitions. Evil things are happening in the world by the evil rulers. Things are changing and they're not good. They're not of you. They're of men and Satan. Heavenly Father, with a hedge of protection, protect us, Heavenly Father. Set a hedge of protection over uh, us, your children, and protect all of us on all of ours. In Jesus' name, by the blood of Jesus Christ. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Give us boldness and strength. Give us the right words to say. And empower us to do what you want us to do. We ask you that you may soften the hearts of evil rulers and if it is possible, turn them, turn them around. Let them turn to God and give them another chance. Let them turn to God. Make their hearts soften and let them turn to God and repent and enable them to change things for better. So things will change, the rulings, the laws will change towards good and godly. Let those in power who have the power in leadership, in governments of the world, who have power and they have been changing things towards evil, either be stopped or change hearts and turn around and change those rulings and those plans for God or put a stop to them completely halt and thwart all those evil plans that none of the schemes of Satan ever pan out let no weapon formed against your children ever prosper Let no weapon ever be even formed against your children. Protect your children. Protect us as your children. Protect ours. And protect all the people in all the nations who are following you, Lord. Who are seeking your face. Look upon them favorably. Have mercy on our land. Forgive us and heal our land. In Jesus' name. Even if there is only a handful of righteous people in our nation, O oh Lord, for the sake of those, save this land. Just as Abraham prayed and pleaded with you, we pray that you may save at least the children of God, your children, from this war, from all these evil things that are happening, and keep us safe, healthy, secure, and let us have our freedom. In Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray that you would just move through every level of government, from the very least to the very greatest, that you would turn the hearts of the people that are standing for immorality, they are standing for evil, they're doing sneaky things, and they are not serving the people or doing the, the representing the people. I pray that their hearts would be turned, and Lord, that their evil deeds would be exposed. I pray that your exposure would come through the entire nation 
so swiftly and so mightily that it's not possible for any man to see this and not say, this is the hand of God, that your mighty exposure would come and also that your hand of justice would deal out justice and that people would be removed from offices, removed from positions that are not um, moral and godly, that are standing for evil. Remove them from these positions, Father, and let them, these positions and these offices be taken up by those who stand for your truth, who will not budge when they're, um, when they have people coming against them and governments coming against them to say, move, we want to do this evil thing, let them stand, 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 as Paul said, stand firm. Let them stand firm in their position, in their godly position. Thank you, Father, for the light that you've put in your people's hearts to pray. It's incredible to see the unity and the power of prayer that is moving through the nation. Do greater things, do bigger things. And Father, we know that um, there are so many communities that have been just devastated by the current administration. And you're using that for your glory because people are now so desperate that they're turning to you. Father, thank you. I pray that you would put um, workers in those communities to share the light of Jesus with them so more people can be saved. Your word says that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Father, send more laborers into this massive harvest that is just beginning to happen. Father, I pray that your love would be in the hearts of people, that you would turn um, these people that have lost everything from anger to love as you wrap your loving arms around them. And Lord, I also pray that the people that are praying with us now, if there's anyone in their families that are not saved, that you would bring them to your glorious salvation, that you would work in the people that are praying for our nation, that you would put your hand on their family's lives and on their life, and that if they have any relatives and siblings, children that aren't saved, that this would be the day of their salvation, that you would do mightily, mightily in their lives. Thank you, God, for your word, which is truth. Thank you for your power, which is in all of us, if we use that authority according to your will. Thank you for your promises in scripture. And Lord, we look um, so anticipatingly if that's a word, at what you're going to do in America and what you're doing now throughout America and the whole world because the whole world is growing, groaning with labor pains. Let us see how you are going to move in the nations across the world. Thank you for everything. In Jesus' name I pray all of this. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us in prayer again. And Hope to see you again uh, on the next session. Goodbye for me. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you.